Hi, I'm Pastor Steve Crittenden of Epiphany of Christ Lutheran Church in Apache Junction, Arizona. Welcome to our worship service on this Palm Sunday. This is the first day of what the church calls Holy Week. This is a week that will take us from the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem all the way to his cross and his death on Good Friday and to that long day of waiting on Saturday. As we do look forward to uh, Holy Week and then the coming Easter that is uh, following that, uh, it's very exciting to announce that we will be resuming in-person worship service on Easter morning. Uh, we will be limiting the uh, capacity at worship, so things are going to be a little bit different. Uh, we are limiting uh, the capacity to 40 people. And so what you will be able to do is call this telephone number. And if you call that phone number, you can make a reservation. I hope you're one of the first 40 that is able to get in. And of course, we will uh, be wearing masks and uh, we will be distancing. That's the reason for the limit in uh, the capacity, because uh, if we get far enough away from one another, uh, we can get 40 people uh, still in here. Uh, the service will be a little bit different because uh, we won't be singing, uh, but we will be having communion. And it's been such a long, long wait for us. And uh, we will be having communion. We kind of think like uh, it's been an over one year fast that we've had since having the Lord's Supper. And uh, we will be uh, having this in-person worship service next, uh, next week on Easter, and that will include communion. And we will be recording that worship service and then uh, posting it online. The worship service begins at 8.30, and uh, we uh, hope to have it posted uh, by 10.30 or so. But now let's begin our worship today with confession and forgiveness in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of heaven and earth comes in close and makes us God's own, equips us by the Holy Spirit to confess our sin and embrace God's forgiveness. With honesty of heart, let us confess our sin. Merciful God, forgive us. Our will is handcuffed to sin, and we cannot break free. We have spoken when we should have kept quiet. We were silent when we should have said something. We acted when we knew better. We were still when we know we should have moved. For the wrong we have done, for the good we have failed to do, have mercy on us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. People of God, see the Son, given to heal you and set you free, because God loved the world so much. Take hold of life, eternal life. Amen.
Let us pray. Sovereign God, you have established your rule in the human heart through the servanthood of Jesus Christ. By your Spirit, keep us in the joyful procession of those who with their tongues confess Jesus as Lord and with their lives praise him as Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading today comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 50. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listening as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Word of God, word of life. Next, we will read from Psalm 31. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye wastes away from grief, my soul and body also. For my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my misery and my bones waste away. I am the scorn of all my adversaries, a horror to my neighbors, an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have passed out of mind like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel. For I hear the whispering of many, terror all around, as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Our second reading today comes from Philippians chapter 2. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Word of God, word of life. Hear now the Holy Gospel 
according to Mark the 11th chapter. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say, The Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went to the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Gospel of the Lord. There is so much going on in this Gospel reading. Mark is a very, uh, uh, the shortest of the four Gospels that we have. There's the fewest chapters and verses and words, and Mark densely packs these 11 verses that we have, and I would like to focus on the last few verses. The verses that describe what's so familiar for us on Palm Sunday, a parade. And I think that the closest analogy for us for what's going on on Palm Sunday is a presidential inauguration parade. And it doesn't matter who has won the presidential election. There are some followers of that person who believe the president to be a savior of the nation. They're celebrating that things are going to change now, finally. There is a sense of victory, even though nothing has changed. There's a sense of hope as they imagine the changes. They're celebrating before the changes occur. And at the same time, it doesn't matter who has lost the election. Some of that person's supporters believe the person celebrated in the inaugural parade is an enemy of the people. There's a sense of threat by changes that haven't even happened yet. So I encourage you to think of what we read about today as Jesus' inaugural parade. With great enthusiasm, the people are welcoming a new king. And they're doing so in traditional ways. David and Solomon, they both rode humbly on a donkey, not on a horse in their inaugural parades. They rode on donkeys. You see, a horse... That's an instrument of war, but a donkey is not. The new kings wanted to signal to the people that they are not a threat to them. And these palm branches that are laid on the street and waved for the new king, that's not a tradition that we read about in the Old Testament. That comes out of uh, First and Second Maccabees. These are books that are part of what we call the Apocrypha. These are books that were not part of the Hebrew Bible. They weren't uh, considered scripture by the Jews, and so they're not part of the Protestant Bible. But they were books that Jesus' followers, the Jews in Jerusalem and in Judea in Jesus' day would have been very, very familiar with. This is why we see uh, so many quotes from books in the Apocrypha show up in our New Testament. And they're using the traditional cheer of Hosanna. They're actually quoting here from uh, Psalm 118. 
And this word Hosanna, this Hebrew word, it means save us, we pray. It is a plea by people who need saving. People who need to be released from captivity. Captivity to the Roman Empire and captivity by the leaders of the temple. This is a victory cheer that is acknowledging that release. And it's a cheer that the Roman Empire is not happy to hear. Remember, this is happening at Passover. This is happening at the time of the celebration of God using Moses to release God's people from captivity to an empire called Egypt. And so every year, as Jews gather in Jerusalem, the Roman Empire is concerned, concerned that this could be an opportunity for a revolt. And so every year, the governor of the Roman province of Judea, who usually lives, I think, in, in one of the Caesareas, he comes to be a presence in Jerusalem at this time riding on an instrument of war, riding on a horse with an army accompanying him. This man named Pontius Pilate is threatened by Jesus. And we see an unlikely alliance because the religious leaders of the temple, they are also threatened by Jesus. And on this first day of the week, this crowd is shouting, Hosanna! They're shouting, Hosanna, with adoration and with hope. And on the sixth day of this week, on Friday, another crowd is going to be shouting, Crucify Him. So I'm going to offer up to you a softball question this morning. If you would have been there, if you would have been in Jerusalem on this day that's described to us on Palm Sunday, would you have been part of the Hosanna crowd? Or would you have been part of the Crucify Him crowd? Sisters and brothers, the convicting reality of the human condition is that it's the same crowd. So thorough and far-reaching is the influence of the powers of this world that the unlikely alliance by Friday will include the Hosanna shouters. So angry are they that Jesus is not leading the changes that they want. They are going to demand that he be crucified. These people who were shouting Hosanna on Palm Sunday, they were the victims of the wealthy and the powerful. And the change that they wanted is that they wanted now to be the wealthy and the powerful. I want you to listen to what Mark tells us. Just a little over a chapter before this. This is in uh, chapter 9 beginning at verse 33. When they came to Capernaum, and when Jesus was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. This crowd that is shouting, Hosanna, they don't want the world to change only their positions in the world. They don't want everybody in the high school to be friends with one another. They want finally to sit at the cool kids' table. Instead of celebrating that the change is happening where everybody can be friends, they are angry at the prospect of missing out on the prestige that they want. They're angry with the prospect that they now don't get to be the ones that exclude other people. 
And they are so angry that they want Jesus to die. And in their disappointment, their save us, we pray, becomes crucify him. Now you have heard me say this before. You've heard me say this as we've talked about worship during a pandemic, as people say that we should be able to gather in worship because God will protect us at worship. That we should be able to sing at Easter because we're celebrating the resurrection and God will protect us. But sisters and brothers, God never promises that. It's so important for us to be able to live what John calls eternal life to live into the promises that God makes, but we need to make sure of what promises God does and doesn't make. And the truth is that Jesus never promised his followers that it's their turn to be the wealthy and the powerful. That's not the good news of great joy for all people. That the angels said to the shepherds at Jesus' birth. I want to remind you what we hear following what I read from Mark chapter 9. I'm going to reread it and add the verse that follows. This is verse 33. When they came to Capernaum and Jesus was in the house with them, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another. Who was the greatest? He sat down. Now this is a, uh, indicating a position of teaching. So Jesus is being a teacher here. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Jesus promises us that someday we will live among the servants of all. We will be blessed by the servants of all. And we will be blessed as servants of all. When the fullness of God's kingdom finally comes, the powers, uh, I'm sorry, when the fullness of God's kingdom finally comes, words like powerful and wealth will no longer be part of the vocabulary because power is only exercised over other people. And wealth is always relative to other people. Until the fullness of God's kingdom comes, until then the powers of this world will lead us as they did Jesus to the only place the powers of this world can lead us. And that is to death. But Jesus promises us that the powers of this world don't have ultimate say God does. And God leads us all to life. And so Good Friday leads us to Easter morning. Thanks be to God. Amen.
relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, you came among us as a suffering servant. Give your church humility. Redeem your people from pride and certainty that we always know your will. Heal us and empower us to confess Christ crucified. Hear us, O God. In creation, life springs from death. Redeem your creation awaiting resurrection. Restore lost habitats and endangered species. Create new possibilities for areas affected by climate change. Grant relief from natural disasters and nurture new growth. Hear us, O God. Jesus was handed over to the powers of this world. In all nations, instruct the powerful that they would not exploit their power but maintain justice, sustain soldiers, and guide those who command them, that they serve the greatest need. Hear us, O God. On the cross, Jesus joined all who feel forsaken. Abide with those who are condemned to death. Defend those who are falsely accused. Console and strengthen those who are mocked or bullied. Accompany all who suffer. Grant respite and renewal. Hear us, O God. You called followers to attend to Jesus' body in death. Sustain hospital workers, hospice workers, and funeral directors. Bless all who plan and lead funerals, those who prepare meals, and all who offer support in grief. Hear us, O God. We praise you for the faith you have given to people of all places and time. Give us also such faith to trust the promises of baptism and with them to look for the resurrection of the dead. Hear us, O God. We entrust ourselves in all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful God, receive the sacrifice of our praise and thanksgiving and the offering of our lives, that following in the way of the cross, we may know the joy of the resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who teaches us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another, in accordance with Christ Jesus. The God of hope, fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The God of grace bless you, now and forever. Amen.
marked with the cross of Christ, go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord.